Hi and welcome back. Let's talk about chronic pain after spinal surgery. This is a devastating pain condition. It's a common pain condition. And I'd like to explain to you why this condition occurs. And then I'm going to describe one of the best ways for you to go about getting the right diagnosis and the right treatment. So let's dive in. Surgery doesn't have to be painful. Now, I know it can be painful, but it doesn't always have to be painful. With a good surgeon, a good anaesthetist, and a good plan, a lot of people can get through relatively big surgeries, call it unscathed, if I can use it as a term. Um, but as, as somebody with more than 20 years experience as an anaesthetist and a pain specialist, I have seen many operations and I've seen people fly through some operations and sometimes a small operation has just absolutely destroyed a person's life. So let's, let's dive in. Generally speaking, chronic pain after an operation, so chronic post-surgical pain, is common and it is increasing because there are more than 230 million operations and surgeries that occur around the globe every single year. And that number is going up. Why is it going up? Because we're living older, we're living longer, but we have more levels of people being unwell, more levels of obesity, more levels of inflammation. So people are struggling with one of the commonest complications after surgery and that is chronic pain make no make no mistake about it chronic pain after after a surgery is one of the commonest complications so chronic pain after spinal or after general surgery is going up so let's have a look at chronic pain after a spinal operation now i wanted to give you some numbers in terms of spinal surgery, I found some numbers from a paper in the USA that says probably about there are about half a million spinal operations occurring per year. And just say with a general chronic post-surgical rate of pain being 20 to 40 percent, that is a high number of people with pain. And we know across the board, depending on the studies that you look at, anything from between 8 and 40% of people following a spinal operation can have persistent pain, chronic pain. That is new pain, that is different pain, that is debilitating pain. Now having a look at the number of spinal operations in Australia, I might do this separately with a, a spine surgeon because I am not a spine surgeon, I don't know the nuance of this, but essentially looking at the Australian Spine Registry, this was published in 2023. The data in that report was from January of 2018 to January of 2023, and it noted that there were 3,733 participants who had a spinal operation. That's only about 80% of all operations, but roughly we're talking 3.7 to say 4,000 operations over that five year period. And again, with persistent post-surgical pain rates of anything from 8 to 40%, just call it 30%. That's a high number of people with ongoing pain. The reason why I wanted to have this discussion today was to explain to you why this occurs, or just give you some kind of framework to understand if one of these reasons is why you or somebody you love might be having pain following a spinal operation. This is from a paper. I will reference the paper below. There will also be some other links to previous videos we've done on chronic post-surgical pain, just generally, not spinal surgery. So please have a look at those and ask questions, share comments down below. So let's dive in. This is called the pathophysiology of chronic pain after spine surgery. And there are two broad areas, really. There are structural factors that can cause ongoing pain or new pain, and there are non-structural factors. So structure, structural meaning the structure of the spine. It somehow changes in some way. Uh, and then the structural factors might be further divided into two structural causes. Uh, one is surgical factors involved in structural changes, and the other is non-surgical factors involved in structural changes. So let's go through each one in turn. And again, I want to give you information. So structural factors, number one, and let's talk about surgical factors that are related to structural changes, the changes in the structure. Well, the first is inadequate 
decompression or inadequate surgery. Now, most of the time, spinal surgery is done to decompress a part of the spine. Uh, so the surgery is not completed or not done properly, sometimes done at a different level or should have been done at two levels, was done at one level. Again, there is no blame here. This is just merely facts based on some study. So for example, there might be some ongoing continued central spinal canal stenosis that's the red area where there is still prolapse and uh, activating touching the spinal cord that's one of the structural factors that may cause pain inadequate surgical depression uh, decompression similarly a similar similar thing might apply on the side that's called foraminal stenosis the foramen where the nerve root exits the spine, uh, inadequate decompression in those areas. And they say, this study says that about 29% of, of total uh, chronic post-spinal surgery pain is related to inadequate decompression. So one third of these cases is because the, the surgery wasn't done effectively. Number two, you could get excessive decompression so you do too much decompression too much freeing up of the nerves or the spinal cord and what that does is that causes an element of instability so the spine then can change and become unstable that is another structural surgical factor that causes this ongoing pain and then of course structural surgical factors might include complications from surgery. They might include nerve damage, um, as I've said, misdiagnosis, mistreatment. Um, and so what, what this says is that the key to reducing chronic post-surgical pain after a spinal operation is having a good diagnosis, having good surgical treatment. So if the surgery is done well and properly and for the right reason, you have less likelihood of developing chronic post-spinal surgical pain. So let's carry on. Let's stick with structural factors and let's talk about non-surgical structural factors. So these are structural factors. The structure changes, but not directly related due to the surgery. So let me explain. And there's quite a good diagram here. But the big one is scarring. We call it fibrosis. We call it epidural scarring. So that is up to about a third of the patients as well. So that is the inflammatory process occurs and that leads to scarring. That is not right or wrong. That is just what happens. That is the way the body heals following an injury, following a surgery. Fibrosis is a natural tissue reconstruction and wound healing process to protect the integrity of tissues and organs after tissue damage, healing, fibrosis, scarring. It happens but it can trigger post-surgical pain. And there are different phases of fibrosis and, and scarring and healing, tissue healing. There's phase one, which occurs within the first three to five days. That's an inflammatory process. Um, so that's the acute post-operative inflammation. Phase two is this active phase of what we call fibroblast formation. And that occurs probably two to three weeks or three to four weeks after surgery. And then phase three is what we call the tissue reconstruction. So the tissue changes and it, and it that effectively scars down is what people understand. And that can last months or years. And one of the scars or one of the things that they're starting to do some research on is called a dural scar. And again, it's a natural wound healing process, but that's the dura, which is one of the covering back coverings of the spinal cord. And that can scar up and affect local nerves. And that can lead to chronic back pain. So we're still sticking with the structural factors that are non-surgical. So we've talked about epidural scarring. We've talked about um, foraminal stenosis. I need to mention something called pseudoarthrosis. And that's effectively, if a spinal fusion is done, it doesn't effectively happen so the spine is not fused a pseudoarthrosis and that can occur in about 30 percent of patients then you might have a recurrent disc prolapse so so the disc might prolapse again the disc might prolapse above below somewhere else 
It's a structural factor, but it's not directly related to the surgery. Uh, and then one of the other structural factors is what we call adjacent segment disease. It's not directly related to the surgery, not caused by the surgery, but it is a structural factor that occurs because of the surgery. And adjacent segment disease is effectively where if you fuse two parts of the spine, the area above and the area below will take on the load, do the excessive work. In a similar fashion, whereas if I hurt my right shoulder and I need to use my left shoulder, my left shoulder becomes sore because I'm overusing it, overcompensating with it, and that is called adjacent segment disease. And that's a constellation of symptoms associated with degeneration at a spinal level adjacent next to the area that has received the spinal fusion surgery. Uh, and there's a, the adjacent segment disease is another big discussion point. So we've talked about the structural factors that can cause persistent pain after spinal surgery, chronic post-spinal surgical pain. Let's talk about the non-structural factors. So this is the, these are the factors whereby the structure, it, it, the structure itself doesn't cause the pain. Something else causes the pain. And of course, you've got the physical big structure, but then you've got the, 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 the smaller things that are happening in what we call the local microenvironment. So inflammation. So inflammation itself can cause pain. And that's got nothing to do with the structure. It's just a factor of the surgery. It's a factor of tissue healing, tissue trauma. Um, and that local inflammation can either cause what we call an arachnoiditis. So inflammation is not a pleasant thing. We've all bumped ourselves or we'll bruised ourselves. It, it hurts. It's painful. Uh, so that can cause arachnoiditis, which is inflammation of the nerve of the nerves itself within the spinal cord area. You can get chemical radiculitis. So, for example, if that you can see the little nerve roots exiting the spinal canal, they look fine. They're clear from prolapse disc or anything, but it still hurts, and that's because an area of inflammation can still occur in the micro environment chemical radiculitis, so inflammation. Um, and then what about the nerves itself? The nerves can change. The nerves can become more excitable, and that is called sensitization. So the nerves themselves change so that they start amplifying a pain signals, and that is called central sensitization. The nerves, the smaller nerves can change, and that's called peripheral sensitization. And then when the brain and spinal cord changes, that's called central, uh, central sensitization. Have you heard of the glial cells, the glial cells? Well, let me just pause and divert for a second. The brain and spinal cord and nerves all need support structure cells. So if you think about the brain, Two-thirds of the brain itself is not for, made up of neurons, but it's made up of support structures and cells that help the neurons to function. Only a third of that is brain neuron itself, and spinal cord similarly. And those, those support structures or, or cells are called glial cells, glial cells. And some of the glial cells include microglial cells, include astrocytes, and they have many specific functions to support nerve function. And so with this local inflammation that occurs after trauma, the microglial cells, uh, the astrocytes, they change and they change in such a way that they trigger pain, if I can use that as a term, within the spinal cord and the nerves. So the microglial cells malfunction and therefore the nerves malfunction. So we're doing research looking at the microglial cells, not the nerves in some forms of neuropathic pain. Sticking with the non-structural factors, another big one that can trigger pain are the psychological factors. And we cannot manage pain without considering these factors. And that includes anxiety, depression, pre-existing anxiety, pre-existing depression, catastrophization, lack of support. And there are many other factors as well. And again, this has been discussed and touched on in a previous uh, video on chronic post-surgical pain. 
I try to get through this quite quickly because I want to give you quite a lot of information but effectively what I've discussed is the reasons why pain can occur after a spinal operation. They are complicated reasons. There are many factors that can occur but I do know and I see this on a day-to-day -day basis in this practice that it can absolutely destroy people's lives. Now spinal surgery is there for a reason it can absolutely change people's lives and I've absolutely seen that as well but we cannot underestimate any surgery and how the surgery can affect the very delicate bodies that we have okay so if you know somebody that's got, got chronic pain after surgery spinal surgery or otherwise if you if you are somebody with chronic pain after spinal surgery there is one big thing that you can do to get the right help and it's something I see people not do all the time and that is to get help go and see a spinal surgeon ask she or he uh, why you've got the pain let them assess you let them make sure that there is no factors at play that need to be assessed or addressed absolutely I'm not saying no once that's been done or while that's being done see somebody that is trained see somebody that is experienced in assessing diagnosing and managing chronic post post-surgical pain chronic pain after spinal surgery an experienced pain specialist a good pain clinic this is what we do this is bread and butter stuff for us we do this on a daily basis so if you get the right diagnosis if you get the right treatment plan it is possible to get back on track again and in another video which I'll do shortly I will dive into the treatment options for somebody with chronic pain after spinal surgery of which there are many so this is something you don't have to live with this is something your loved one doesn't have to live with there are some things that can be done to manage this pain so please reach out wherever you are go and talk to your general practitioner go and talk to your family physician explain to them what is happening if you're not being heard find somebody else that will hear you um, seek help get help because without help you're not going to manage this um, you're not going to be able to get this done alone so so get help get on the right track I've hoped I've given you something I've hoped I've given you some information because as I've mentioned before knowledge is power and if you have the capacity to understand what's going on you're back in the driving seat again